and this video is all about developing a comparative analysis and it's really a guide to planning and putting together a comparative paragraph uh, for the major media analysis task in year 12 English. Uh, this is the first task in year 12 English where students are required to write formally and with structure so we really focus on that in this case. In order to outline the task uh, the, the description is that you need to choose two media texts and compare them in regards to their form, purpose, language, audience and context. All right? So this is the SACE language that we need to address. Um, the first rule to really recognise here is that there's a range of different skills that have already been covered in the course that need to be integrated together. So if you're finding that you don't know where to start or you're not sure what something means or you're not sure what a word means, the expectation is you'll go back and look at previous tasks and resources that we've been through in order to really build this. So you need an understanding of comparison, you know, which is really covered during the writer's statement. Um, you need an understanding of the conventions of a text. And we really looked at that in the creating text module, particularly when we were unpacking what makes an article and what makes a vlog. There's some great video logs you can look there uh, to help you through. You need an understanding of persuasive techniques. Now we haven't covered that this year, but it is something that's covered in every year of schooling uh, in high school. So you should have a pretty good understanding of this already, but there are some resources to bring you up to scratch and you need an understanding of comparative teal structure. And again, this is something you would have done in previous years. So the idea of this task and its creation is that it brings together a bunch of different things uh, that students would have been required to do in the English curriculum over the years and have them show them all at once. That's what makes it a more complex assignment and one of the last ones we do. Uh, to really get the best result, you should be using resources to get yourself ahead here. Okay, this PowerPoint itself is a great resource. So watch it over and over again. Um, you know, look at it piece by piece, pause it, play it, hear, you know, come back to it. Um, it's designed to really talk you through. The rhetorical devices guide, which has been placed on the SharePoint, really outlines different techniques which you should be using. At the end of the day, an advertisement is largely a persuasive text. So you should be referring to that language. That's really gonna show your knowledge and understanding. And we also have the Sway, which is also available through the Fair SharePoint on creating text. And there's a lot of information about conventions, you know, what makes a convention, what should we expect, what is a convention, and also context. You'll find a PowerPoint there about uh, field, tenor, and mode, which talks a lot about what makes context and language and how we define these things. So there's some great things to look at. Um, there's elements of structure that you really need to consider here. This should follow a very formal and logical progression. So the structure of your essay will be an introduction, a paragraph, one, two, and three, and a conclusion with a total word count of 1,200 words. Okay, that's what we're aiming to produce. Uh, if I zoom in on one of those paragraphs, uh, we recognise that the paragraph has its own structure topic sentence, elaboration, evidence, effect, and linking statement. And you notice that I've written the specific function of each of these for the paragraph, which you can pause and read through in more detail. Uh, but I will come back to this as I talk through the creation of each section. So for this tutorial, I've selected two texts that I'm going to compare. They're both uh, texts that aim, the purpose is to sell Coca-Cola, and the target audience in both cases is women, though there are some differences that I'll unpack later on. Um, what will our essay start to look like based on what we've observed in these texts? That's really the question that we're putting together. I'm not writing a whole essay here, but I am aiming to give you a preview as to how I take these two texts and I create them into an analysis. Now, interestingly enough, you can view these two texts on YouTube pretty easily by doing a couple of basic searches, um, but you can also find them on the SharePoint. Uh, so it is probably worthwhile looking at them beforehand. They don't go for very long. Um, but just to be aware of them um, will definitely help. If you can't get a handle of them or you can't find them anywhere, um, that's fine. You can come and see me, but otherwise I'm sure you can piece together um, where we're going and what we're doing. So uh, my first point here is that I'm really putting together a planning model. You know, I want to make sure that this is going to be a good comparison before I start because I don't want to have to write 1,200 words only to find out that I've missed something. So planning is really essential, particularly when you're doing uh, quite long, detailed, our comparative texts. 
Uh, in this model here, you can see that I've outlined similarities and differences in each text through the use of green to show similarities and red to show differences. And again, you can pause this video and you can look at this in more detail. I'm not gonna go through in a huge amount detail, I'm not going to talk through everything, but what you can see is I've identified in the first section um, that the audience is similar in that it's both targeted at women, but there is a difference in that as well as to what type of women are being targeted and where they are, and that's really reflected in the time context. You'll also notice for paragraph one language features, I bring in some persuasive device language to discuss this. Okay, so um, I show in the first one, the 1961, it uses comparison in saying that Coke has less calories than a grapefruit, and it also uses self-interest. Now, self-interest is a similar technique used in both texts. Okay, they both try and make it seem what's in it for you, but they do it in different ways. So that's why there's green and there's red in this section. Now you might remember that a good comparison requires both similarities and differences. And for this reason, um, you know, I can tell straight away that my piece is going to be successful or it's gonna be passable because I've got a variety of differences and similarities that I can talk about. In most cases, I'm showing how both texts use similar techniques, but how the particular, the particular context of those techniques changes to suit the time period. So that makes an interesting discussion. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, using those notes, and you'll notice I've taken the paragraph one notes that I had in the previous slide, and I've just put them alongside here. I'm going to be creating an essay, uh, creating an essay paragraph based on that information. Okay. So now I come back to the teal, topic sentence, elaboration, evidence, effect, and linking statement. So I'm going to be talking through each section really clearly and, um, and really carefully to make sure you understand the focus and the function of these. And you should be following my example as you construct your own analysis. So I'm starting with the topic sentence. So the topic sentence introduces the focus of the paragraph relating to what will be compared. So is it the language? Is it the form? Is it rhetorical devices? How does this serve the purpose? In this case, I've already identified based on the, uh, based on the top part of my table that the focus is going to be on language features, and these will be compared between both texts. I've identified a similar technique in self-interest, but differences in comparison and humour. The purpose of the text is to promote Coca-Cola. Okay, so what I've done is I've really outlined, um, you know, it's just some key facts that I should be showing in my topic sentence. Okay, I need to make the fact that the purpose is to sell Coca-Cola, um, and it's through the use of it's through similar and different language features that this can be seen in both texts. So. Um, what you might choose to do now is to pause this video and write your own topic sentence and then play and see how close you came to what I did. That's what I did with the class and it's valuable because it means that you're able to use your own initiative um, and see how close you are to the mark. But you're welcome to play through if you like, but there's a warning there that if you choose to pause it and try this on your own, you're more than welcome to. Um, so every section of Teal needs to mention both texts and show comparative language. So that's an important thing just to remember. Okay, so when we talk about comparison, we don't talk about having one paragraph all about one text and one all about the other. It should be constantly integrated in each section of Teal. So here's my example. The 1961 and 2003 Coca-Cola advertisements use similar and different language devices to promote their products. So notice I didn't go into too much detail there. Um, what I did was I thought about what I'd already uh, identified. The focus, of course, was on language features. Okay, so I identified that here. Um, I made the point that there was similar techniques, but there was also different techniques. So I made sure that I outlined that. I didn't go specific, but I just outlined that to make sure that that was really clear. And the purpose of the text uh, was to, um, you know, it was to promote the product of Coca-Cola. Okay, so it's a fairly simple sentence, but it clearly outlines everything I was attempting to do. So now we go to the elaboration, and this is really the section that most people have difficulty with, but it's 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 really about clarifying. You know, before I said there was language features, now I need to make sure that I say what those features are. Okay, so the specific features I need to mention are self-interest, comparison, and humour. 
Okay, I need to mention those. The specific purposes I need to mention are to show the health benefits. So this is where I'm really starting to uh, draw together um, some of my notes. Okay, so I mentioned here, um, you know, the self-interest was related to health benefits, the fact that it was good for your waistline, and here it was more about the fact of about guilty self-indulgence. Okay, um, the specific purposes. Um, you know, comparison, self-interest, and to promote indulgence through humour and self-interest. Okay, so this is what I'm going to bring out. It's the same thing, you can pause it if you like, um, but here comes mine, three, two, one, bang. Now notice how I've got quite a bit of detail here, but I need it for a good elaboration at this level. So while each text um, shares the technique of targeting the self-interest of the audience, the purpose in doing so is distinctly different. As the 1961 advertisement seeks to promote its product by advertising its health benefits, and this approach is further supported with the use of comparison. So notice what I'm doing. It says here, I need to mention health benefits. I've done that. I need to mention that these two techniques are used in the 1961, and I've just done that. Uh, on the other hand, the 2003 advertisement combines targeting self-interest. Okay, so I've said here self-interest. I've covered that one. Um, with the use of humour, in order to portray the product as a selfish indulgence. Okay, so you notice I've, I said here that there was humour, I've said self-interest, I've said that this one uses self-interest and comparison. Um, I've made that really clear and I've been specific about it. Okay, so notice how I'm bringing the details in slowly. So now we go to the third section. Now we're talking about my evidence. Now the purpose of the evidence is to support the elaboration, providing evidence of where in the text these features are used and how this supports the intended purpose of the text. So, you know, I have said that these texts use comparison, self-interest and humour, but now I need to prove that I understand what those techniques actually are by showing examples within the text. Okay, so the evidence I need to include in this section includes quotes. So, this individual size bottle has no more calories than half a grapefruit. Now that was an example of this kind of, um, com oh, sorry, of the comparison section, okay, less than a grapefruit. Uh, it provides a welcome bit of uh, quick energy, so that's something I could say to show this uh, self-interest. It makes for a pleasant pause in a busy day, and don't you get any thinner. Now, these are things that, you know, you think, oh, if I get this, these, this is what I'm going to feel, this is what's in it for me. Um, for the 2003 text, I've also taken out some quotes that name should be no obstacle between you and your Diet Coke. You know, again, there's some self-interest there. Um, and, you know, and this idea of just Oliver, you know, he's just a jerk, um, is an example of humour that's used in there. You know, she's supposed to be kind of really awful and um, everything like that. So now I'm going to put this into my evidence section. Again, now would be the time to pause it. But I'm going to jump straight in and sections are getting pretty big here. So you'll notice some text disappear. All right. Here it is. Within the 1961 advertisement, the host promotes the health benefits of Coca-Cola by comparing it to healthy foods. Here's my example of that. This betrays the product in an appealing manner. This approach is further reinforced through appealing to the self-interest of the audience. Here's my example of that. So notice I outlined what I wanted to put into the text beforehand, and here's me constructing it. Um, in contrast, the 2003 advertisement uses self-interest to exaggerate the consumer's desire for the product, implying that it's preferable over positive relationships. So I've used that quote, name should be no obstacle. This form of humour is demonstrated throughout the advertisement, exaggerating the main character to be more interested in drinking coke than sharing with others. You know, so that's the humour. You know, and I've used a different example in this case. You know, we have Amy, who is now my. Um, this use of satire enhances the advertisement's focus on Coca-Cola as a self-indulgent product. So notice how there's some similarities in the language I'm using. I'm still talking about purpose. I'm still talking about target audience, but I'm using the specific stuff to build my argument. Here's the next section, effect. This relates to the use of the disgust element to, ta to the target audience, discussing how audience and purpose may differ depending on context. So here's where I really show my skill in analysis. And what I'm really saying here is, um, okay, these are different texts, so what? Okay, how would this influence people differently? How does this reflect uh, the time period? Why were these effective? You know, what kind of impact would it have on the people they were targeted at? So I need to start talking about context and audience. The focus here is a comparison as to why the message is different and how this targets different consumer groups. Um, the key point to mention is that the time period is distinctly different. 
Okay, so that's the biggest difference of why is the target audience, if it's both targeted at women, why is the target audience different? Well, it's different because women have changed a lot over the last 50 years. Okay, that's why it's different. So I'm going to be putting together my discussion. I'm going to aim to put in detail. I want to show my critical thinking and my analysis skills. So here it is. In the case of each text, specific language features have been used to target distinctly different female audiences, which is revealed through the time context of each text. In the 1961 text, we see the female audience more interested in looking good for their family than indulging in their own pleasures. For this reason, the use of comparison and self-interest show the benefit of the product being that it allows the consumer to keep busy but have a refreshing break. In contrast to this approach, the more satirical 2003 advertisement portrays the target audience as much more selfish and self-indulgent, promoting behaviours that allow the audience to serve themselves over others. This is supported by the character's seemingly ruthless nature, suggesting the target audience to be comparatively more independent than that of women in the 1960s. So what I'm really saying here is that my focus on her, on the female being more independent and, uh, and, and more um, ruthless is because of the change in time. Okay, so the reason why the, the target audience has changed is because the time period has changed. Now for the linking statement, um, what I'm really looking to do here is just reinforce the purpose of the essay. Okay, what am I actually looking to do? Well, I was asked to compare their form, purpose, language, audience and context. So what do I want to do? What was it I was seeking to do in relation to this? So in this case, um, my example, now you might try this beforehand, but my example is in this way, we can see how both the 1961 and 2003 advertisements use similar and different language techniques in order to target their intended audience. So I haven't really, you know, I haven't worked any miracles or magic there. I've just re-clarified what it was I had to do. Um, I've specified that specifically this paragraph was about language techniques. It used similar and different language techniques and the purpose was to target their intended audience. You know, I've already talked about a lot of those things. So I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I just need to make sure that I finish by bringing everything back into alignment. So what does the final product look like? Well, as you can see, I've created a pretty hefty paragraph here, 403 words. But what you can notice is that in each section, I've discussed both texts and I've used comparative language throughout. So I'm constantly jumping between one and the other in each section and talking about why it's relevant and showing my critical thinking and analysis skills. You see? Easy. So hopefully you can follow this guide and this digital lesson as a way um, to teach you the strategy of putting together your own paragraph. Feel free to go back, watch this again, pause it, look at more detail in the things I've written and the process I go through. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Good luck.